Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to give you my top five picks for front-end JavaScript frameworks in 2017. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12-week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full-time job in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. As with all of these kinds of videos, I have to kind of do a little disclaimer. So this list is composed of my opinion only, so take that with a grain of salt. This is based on my own experience as well as unbiased research. They're ranked by things like popularity, syntax, features, ease of use, and so on. So what I would suggest is to watch this video and do some other research and then decide what's best for you. Make your own list, and I'd like to see that uh, in the comments section as well. So I also want to say that all five of these frameworks are not very far off from each other. For instance, the top three are almost on the same level for me, in, in my opinion, but there may be one or two things that I like better about number one than number two or three. All right, I almost didn't even put a rank on them because it was extremely hard to, uh, to rank these. And if you disagree with the list, that's absolutely fine. I'd like you to leave your feedback and, and maybe your own personal list in the, the comment section. Just keep it respectful. And then the last thing is, this is, this, this is front-end frameworks and libraries. I know React and Vue are technically libraries, but these can often replace full frameworks in many cases. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So at number five, we have Polymer, which is a framework or library maintained by Google. Um, Polymer is built on top of the concept of web components. Web components are a set of W3C standards, which consist of several different web technologies, including custom elements. All right, so web components are uh, they're part of the browser, so we don't need any third-party libraries like jQuery or Dojo. Polymer uh, also believes in leveraging the browser's native technologies rather than relying on a, um, you know, a custom JavaScript library. The Polymer DOM layer is the closest to the native JavaScript layer. Polymer also uses something called behaviors to share code between different components. Behaviors can define lifecycle callbacks, declared properties, uh, observers, event listeners, and so on. You can also extend behaviors pretty easily. Another advantage to Polymer is how it encapsulates complex code and structure. You essentially have everything in one place and it's not scattered all around the application. You can create your own HTML elements and you can compose them into uh, into complete web applications that are scalable and maintainable. Alright, so as I mentioned, the web component standard includes custom elements. These are similar to, uh, similar to Angular directives, but directives don't use the web components API. Polymer and the web component specification is uh, a more standardized way of doing things. Now some disadvantages to Polymer is the lack of documentation and support, dependency issues, um, problem with problems with mobile platforms and it's also not entirely clear how to organize uh, larger applications with Polymer and in my opinion it has quite a learning curve um, these are just some of the things that kept Polymer out of the top three alright so at number four we have Ember as it says right on their homepage Ember is a full framework for creating ambitious web applications Ember is known for being very productive it was created with ergonomics in mind and uses very friendly APIs so that you can get things done faster with ease. Ember uses best practices to its core. It's a, a convention over configuration framework which is popularized by Ruby on Rails. So basically it's hard to write bad code and you need to follow a set of conventions and things will just work. This reduces errors, um, reduces debugging and also makes it easy for multiple developers to work on the same projects as long as they have they use the same conventions. So the Ember command line interface tool or Ember CLI gives you a whole host of productivity tools including broccoli.js which is a, a highly efficient build system that can concatenate, uh, transpile, minify JavaScript and do many other things. You can easily use ES6 syntax and compile it down to ES5 for maximum browser compatibility. You can also get testing tools, uh, JS hint, live reload. They're all bundled within this Ember CLI. Ember also has its own ecosystem of add-ons that can easily be installed to your project. 
Ember Data is a popular add-on which is used to, uh, to robustly manage model data. There's many ORMs to choose from. You can you know, use Ember with a uh, long line of databases and data stores. Uh, another popular add-on is Ember Simple Auth, which gives you basic, um, allows you to manage basic authentication and authorization. Ember also uses the handlebars and the HTML bars templating engine by default, which makes the views or, or the templates very dynamic, and it uses a very simple syntax for uh, for using logic inside the view or inside the template. All right, so that is number four. All right, so at number three we have Angular 2 Plus, meaning Angular 2, Angular 4. Um, so, but for simplicity, we're just going to call it Angular. Now, when it comes to features, Angular is definitely up there. Angular does a lot more than, let's say, React because it has a full, it's a full framework and it has things like an HTTP module, its own routing system, dependency injection, and so on. So it's more of a batteries included framework than most. However, you can, you, you can do just about all this stuff with React with, with uh, you know, adding a couple, uh, a couple packages to it. So Angular can be overkill if you have a really simple UI. Um, you probably want to go with something like React or Vue, um, but Angular is good for, um, you know, huge front ends. Angular 2 has been really popular this year. Uh, part of that may be because it's maintained by Google, um, but it's also part of the mean stack, which is MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node.js. Of course, you can also replace Angular with React or Vue. Um, but either way, knowing Angular, especially knowing the mean stack, is a huge notch under your belt if you're looking for a job in web development. All right, most of these frameworks come with some kind of command line uh, or command line interface like Ember CLI. Uh, Angular is no exception. It has Angular CLI, which is really great for generating applications um, using the dev server, testing tools, and of course the build tools. All right, so it makes it much easier to deploy an Angular application uh, than, you know, than doing it manually. Now, this, is, this next one can be a pro or a con, depending on the developer. Some people love TypeScript and some hate it. All right, it can be a good thing because it offers static typing in JavaScript, uh, which is something that's been missing from JavaScript for a long time. You can define all your properties with a type, such as a string or number or whatever. Um, this can minimize errors and bugs. And then on the other hand, uh, if that doesn't interest you, it just adds, you know, adds weight to your program and can overcomplicate things. Personally, I don't really like it. Uh, I would rather Angular 2 would not use TypeScript, but um, I know a lot of developers do like it. And then another advantage to Angular is that uh, it's used for the popular Ionic framework, which is used to build hybrid mobile apps. All right, hybrid apps don't perform quite as good as native apps do at least at this point, but they're also a hell of a lot easier to create. All right, so um, basically with Angular, you have the two advantages of, of learning TypeScript and Ionic Framework. Okay, so you, you kind of get some extra um, knowledge under your belt. So at number two, we have React, which is technically a UI library, but it does a lot of the things that a framework does, and if not directly, then with a couple extra packages. All right, so React does have a bit of a learning curve, and I think the biggest struggle, at least for myself, when I was learning React, is was learning the best practices. You can basically do the same thing in five different ways, and knowing what route you should take can be kind of complicated. Um, but once you really grasp that, it's not really a problem anymore, and things become clear. So being a UI library and not a full, complete framework makes React very lightweight. Angular can often feel bogged down, but I don't get that feeling with React. And since it's a UI library that only works with, uh, you know, within the view, you can use it with other frameworks as well. So you can use it with Angular, you can use it with Backbone, and so on. React is also fast and efficient. It creates its own virtual DOM for components to live, which gives us flexibility and also gives, you, gives us a little performance bump. So it compares the DOM to its own virtual DOM, and it only updates what it needs to, okay, which makes it very fast and efficient. React is also very popular. The MERN stack is quickly gaining traction, replacing Angular with React. I do read a lot of um, web dev and, and tech blog posts, and React seems to be uh, more popular than Angular. It has a lot less baggage, 
and um, it's much more lightweight. So React runs in the view layer, but you also have the option to use it with Flux or Redux, um, which gives you uh, a way to manage your state, work with databases and APIs, and introduce the concept of uh, unidirectional data flow. These architectures can be a little difficult to understand at first, but once you do understand them, you can see just how powerful they are. Um, like with any other framework I've mentioned, React has its own CLI or, or command line interface, which is called Create React App, and it easily generates an application um, and its components, and also gives you a dev server, testing, and build tools. And then last but not least, React is really reaching outside of web development. React Native, in my opinion, is the best way to build mobile apps with web, web dev technologies. It's different than using something like Ionic, which is used for hybrid apps. React Native applications feel a lot less clunky, and they're more like real native applications for both Android and iOS. Um, you also have React Windows, so you can build Windows applications. Next.js, which works with um, React on the server. I, I, haven't gotten, I haven't really gotten into these, but um, I've read a little bit about them. All right, so at number one, we have Vue.js. And yes, I did spell it correctly this time. <laughs> Those of you who watched my um, top programming languages in 2017 know what I mean. I actually spelled Vue, V-I-E-W, which was absolutely ridiculous because I use it all the time. Um, so Vue is actually very similar to React as it utilizes a virtual DOM, um, uses reactive components, and so on. But there are some advantages to Vue over React. So to me, there's one advantage that really sticks out with Vue, and that's simplicity. It has uh, far less of a learning curve than most frameworks. There's no polyfilling, transpiling, bundler, one script tag in the HTML, and you can use it. All right, so people um, that only have knowledge of HTML and basic JavaScript, they can actually look at a Vue application and kind of understand the gist of what's going on. Um, and for advanced JavaScript programmers, Vue allows immediate productivity. Vue is very flexible and can be used for an extremely simple UI to more in-depth applications with ES6, JSX, uh, routing, bundling, and more. It's also a very unopinionated framework. React prides itself on JSX and not having the need to use templates, but in Vue 2.0 they added the option to use templates uh, as well as um, rendering in JavaScript and JSX. So if you're, if you're a React or an Angular developer, Vue is going to look very familiar to you. In fact, knowing React, going into Vue, I pretty much understood it all of it within the first day because it, it's just very easy to, to look at and understand. So AngularJS and even Angular 2 easily support two-way data binding uh, using ng model. React, not so much. You can use two-way data binding, but it's a little more complicated. But Vue makes it easy with vModel. So in fact, I'm going to put a link in the description which compares Vue, React, and Angular with some code samples. And I'd suggest checking that out. Two-way data binding is one of the examples. All right, Vue.js also has its own command line interface called Vue CLI. And it's used to easily scaffold uh, Vue projects. You can choose to use Webpack as well as Browserify. Or you can just use a single HTML file. You can also create your own templates. Um, there's a dev server, and you can easily compile and deploy using the view build command. So deploying Vue is much easier than something like Angular 2. All right, but one drawback of Vue is its support uh, and its widespread adoption. It doesn't have as many resources um, on the internet that you would, as you would find with React and Angular. But if you think about it, React is backed by Facebook. Angular by Google, Vue managed to get to where it is without those companies. So I think that's definitely something to look at and to consider. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video and for the top five JavaScript frameworks of 2017. Again, this is my opinion only, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.